anything you try for the first time can seem difficult or even impossible. It's like if you can remember your first time trying to play basketball. It was hard enough trying to dribble the ball, but you had to get it in a hoop that was only that big as well. It seemed sort of impossible. But eventually, if you stuck with it and if you practiced it, you, you saw that not only could you do that, but a couple of people were trying to block you at the same time and still you managed to get it in. Anything can improve with enough practice. Now, if you don't have a routine and consistently study and improve, then you're relatively falling behind. Now, what I mean by that is, again, if this is what you're capable of and you have an option to put 0% or 100% effort into what you're doing, if you consistently put 95%, let's say, effort into what you're doing in year 12, then in year 13, you're going to be capable of a lot more. But if you only put, let's say, 40% effort into everything you're doing, then you're not improving, you're not able to do more. So next year, when everyone's at this stage, you'll still be small relatively at that stage. You'll be falling behind. And that is how you make things easy. What it is, if you're in year 12, then for you to set a GCSE paper, you probably only need to give 40% of your effort. But in, when you're in year 12, you need to give 80, 90% of your effort at all times. Again, if you were a year 12 student and you want to set a year 13 paper, then you probably have to give 100% of your effort into it. That's how you make something easy. Now the way you group, the way you improved, is every single time you found out an answer to a question you didn't know. Every time you did some work at home or in college. Every time, every si single exam paper you sat, because during the exam times, it took you, it was a very difficult thing for you to do. So next time, you'll be able to sit five or six exams in a week with a lot more ease. It's normal not to know something. That's why we're at college. But if you start early on from the year, if you start doing some work from the beginning, then it'll be a lot easier to ask questions and to say to the teacher, I don't understand something, because that's normal. But if you're falling behind and if you're not catching up, it gets harder and harder to ask basic questions, and that can be a big problem. But there is an advantage to catching up if you're dedicated and, and have enough time and you're open to asking questions. What I mean by that is, if we look at this as the time and this as the improvement in learning, then we have two students here. Student number one, they have done well in their GCSEs and they continue to slowly progress and improve, and that's very good. Student number two, they weren't happy with what they did in GCSEs or in the January results, and they decided they want to catch up and improve a lot more. Now, because they have to do a lot more work, by the time they are caught up, they're used to doing more work. Now, if they continue doing that, they, then they can even overtake the first student. That's why it's important for the second student to always compare themselves to themselves and see their improvement. It's the same with student number one, the one that's consistently improving. They have to compare themselves to themselves as well, even if they're the best in the class. It's always important to improve. You can always go to the advanced questions, or if you're in the AS level, you can always have a look at the A2 books. This, is, this student number two is exactly what happened with Uma. We said he, he was only predicted four Ds. In January results, he got a D and a U. But he decided he wanted to catch up, he wanted to improve. And by the end of AS year, he got four A's. 